A quick word about automating the production of those SIMS reports to update the CSV files. I've included as part of the installation files a folder called SIMS Auto Batch. Uh, if you open it up, you'll find that it contains two example batch files. If we have a look at the first of those example batch files, using Notepad as an editor, for example, or your favourite editor, you'll see that basically they consist of just two lines. Um, which call a SIMS utility called commandreporter.exe. Now it's worthwhile checking before you try running this yourself, it's worthwhile checking that it's in this subdirectory. Sometimes it's in a different subdirectory. So I'll have a search for commandreporter.exe and put whatever file path uh, it, it belongs to in there. The username you'll also need to change in these batch files and you'll need to change it to the Power BI user that you've set up. Um, I do recommend you set up a separate user, possibly called Power BI or whatever you want to call them, um, with a good secure password. And it's very important that that Power BI Sims user has got third party reporter rights plus senior manager plus administrator rights. It needs pretty high level of rights to run these reports. But it's that third party reporting right, which is especially useful because without it, we can't bring across all the columns that we need in our reports and the reports will actually fail when we try and bring them into Power BI. So replace the user there with whatever your uh, Sims Power BI user is called. And you'll have to do the same there with the password. Uh, which is in plain text there. So be aware that it's in plain text and only save this file somewhere where it's protected by uh, your sort of uh, credentials on your network. Then we've got the forward slash server name and the instance name there as well. Uh, you can find this out by looking on the help screen in Sims. It does actually show you in the technical details section, as far as I remember, it will actually tell you what your server name is. If not, have a look in connect.ini because the server name is also referenced in connect.ini. As is the database name. So you'll need to replace this with your database name as well. And you'll need to pick up the name of the report. If you remember, this is one of the reports that we imported. Uh, when we imported them, part of my recommendations are you do a file save as on that imported report and give it a name that you will then recognize. So yours might not have that file name. You'll need to check what you rename them to and make sure it's exactly the same. And then the output drive, you'll want to specify here. And if you specify an output drive here, it overwrites whatever output drive you may have put into the original report within Sims when you run it from the command line like this, it's overwritten by whatever output drive we specify here. So for example, on my example here, I've created an output drive called Power BI and I'm saving my pupil uh, CSV files into a subdirectory called pupils. And I would then put the name of the school in here and do give it the CSV file needs to have a meaningful name. I think I mentioned this earlier. But um, this is how um, Power BI will identify a particular pupil as belonging to a particular school because it looks at the title of the CSV file that holds the pupil details. So put the name of the school in there, .csv, as you want it to appear within Power BI to the end users. And that's it. You basically need to repeat this. There's one line here which creates the pupil uh, CSV file with a list of all the pupils in. And there's another line here that runs the current year's attendance marks. So you can see here it's running the current year's attendance marks. It's currently 2122. So it's picking the attendance marks report for 2122. And again, I need to consider where it needs to be output to in this part of the CSV file here. Um, so I'll just put uh, C Power BI for my example. What you call the actual CSV file is less important here. You can almost call it whatever you want, but I do recommend for your own sanity, if you ever want to come back and debug this, include the name of the school in it somehow, maybe as a little uh, abbreviation. Um, and also include the word marks 
and include the academic year as well. You'll make it much easier to debug things if things don't go right, if you give them that kind of a name. So you'd run that, this batch file then at each school. So you can use Microsoft Scheduler, uh, the scheduling program that comes on, 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 on Microsoft servers or even desktops to schedule this so it runs overnight, um, four o'clock in the morning, two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, obviously try and avoid your backup uh, times and maybe try and avoid any times when you schedule Sims updates. Um, they usually take not more than half an hour, 45 minutes to run, even if you're exporting a lot of data. Notice that I'm only exporting the current year's attendance marks details. I'm not exporting last year's or the year before. They will never change. So there's no point putting them into the schedule. And so the final point that I'll make here is, of course, uh, next September, when we start a new academic year, you'll just need to go into this uh, batch file and change the report. So it picks up the report for, in this case, 22-23. I have as a default included as part of the bundle files that will take you up for next year and the year after. So there should already be a report in Sims that you can just reference here. If not, uh, you can... Uh, uh, save uh, go to the exit one of the existing March reports. Do a file, do a save as, and just change the from and to dates in the sub report for the marks. If in doubt, get in touch with me, and I'll show you how. That's it. Good luck.